Welcome to another video by LSX Engines, Tuning, and Marine. This video is uh, going to be named Part 4B because it's a uh, follow-up to Part A, excuse me, Part 4, and um, which will now become Part 4A. So um, basically in this video I'm going to show you two things. First of all, I'm going to beef up the wiring to the ignition coil that I did in Part 4, and I'll explain why in a minute. And the second part is I'm, I made a mistake in part one that I'll explain later, but um, in this video I'm going to correct uh, those two issues. So first of all, this is the ignition coil right here um, as part of the Delco EST upgrade. And this connector has this pink wire, and it looks to me to be a, uh, at least a 14 gauge wire, uh, possibly 12, but I think it's 14. So one of the cardinal rules of wiring anything is you always go from a larger to a smaller wire from the power source. You never come from a power source and feed a bigger wire going away from the power source. That's just you just don't do that because you're the smaller wire can't handle as many amps. So the bottom what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say is General Motors built this connector with a 14 gauge wire and they did that for a reason. So therefore this they must need this coil must need high amperage at its I guess most loaded condition to work properly. So um, if you look at the wire diagram on a boat like this, there's a purple wire that comes from the ignition switch and that purple wire feeds the fuel pump, it feeds the ignition coil, it feeds the Thunderbolt module, it also, it also goes to the back of the alternator, I don't, although I don't think there's a load on that. But um, anyway, that's that purple wire I think is, is looks to me like an 18 gauge wire and that with the fuel pump alone, that, I would think that would be a little bit small. But then you want to put the module and the coil on the same wire. I just don't see that being uh, being a wise thing to do. And if you remember part four, that's what I did. I wired the purple wire and I used the purple wire to power this coil. The engine ran. But the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to do this right. So this is what I've done. So I bought a relay and the box. This is a 12 volt automotive relay. I bought it at O'Reilly's, and it says 12 volts. You might you gotta make sure you get a 12 volt relay. It's a 30 amp relay. And if you're not familiar with relays, what relays do is they use a small amount of current, a smaller uh, power source to switch a bigger power source. It's like a, it's like a light switch, but instead of your finger switching on, it's an electric current switching on, a small amount of electric current. So if you look at the back of this, or this diagram of this relay. That terminal by my thumb is, says terminal 85 to ground. Terminal 86 is what's used to switch this relay on, and that will be the purple wire coming from your ignition switch. So your ignition switch will turn this relay on by putting power where my thumb's at, with this being the ground. Then this terminal down here says fuse power from battery. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is run a fused 14 uh, gauge wire from a, a nearby 12 volt source, and I'll explain which one I'm gonna do. To this terminal, and then this terminal right here is uh, power to lance. It says power to lance, but in this case, it's going to be power to the ignition coil coming off of this terminal up here, which is 87. Uh, this diagram says 87 and 87, but I think it's supposed to be 87 and 87 B. But um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wire this relay in to power up the ignition coil, so the ignition coil gets a separate source of uh, power on a 14 gauge wire, and it doesn't tax the purple wire. I think the purple wire to me is already taxed enough. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I've already wired up this relay partially. So what I've got, the white wire here is coming in off is coming off terminal 85, and that goes to ground. That's my ground connection. The red wire is on terminal 86, and that is going over. That's a uh, a wire that I butt spliced. Excuse, yeah, butt spliced into uh, uh, well, this red wire is really an extension of the purple wire that's at the back of the motor. So that's the original purple positive that was on the original ignition coil and I butt spliced it to come over here and turn this relay on. So when you turn the key on, the purple wire will be energized with 12 volts and that will turn on this relay and that will turn on your ignition system. Okay, so terminal 30, which is this one right here by, right here by my finger, right there on the bottom, that's terminal 30. It's gonna be powered from this source right here. This is your starter solenoid, and it's got a fairly heavy duty wire coming up to it. And it's a, uh, the color is red purple. It's red with a purple stripe. And that's 12 volts directly from this circuit breaker right here. It comes off the back of that circuit breaker and it comes to right here. 
So that's a very good source of power coming from your main source, your main power source, which is that circuit breaker. That's a 50 amp circuit breaker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a harness that I've already made up. If I can find it. So I built this harness and I've got a ring terminal and it's a heat, weatherproof uh, heat shrink uh, crimped on ring terminal. Then an inline fuse holder, which I'm going to put probably a 15 amp fuse in. Then this is butt spliced again to this red wire. This is 14 gauge red wire. This is 14 gauge right here. So that will come, it will, the ring terminal we landed here, the fuse will go back down there. I'm gonna loop it back around and tie it in with the rest of that gang wires. Come along this water hose here and then come up to the relay on terminal 30. And that'll feed the relay with power from that source right there. It'll be fuse power, so if there's any problem, the fuse will blow instead of causing a fire. So that will go to the relay on terminal 30. Then coming off terminal 87, which should be the front of this relay, which is right down here, we'll just come right here to this ignition coil. This wire right here will be spliced over into a 14 gauge wire landing on terminal 87. And that's how you wire in a relay to power up your ignition coil in your ignition system. Because this coil, remember this coil through the uh, the other connector there, the pink wire powers up the, the uh, ignition module that's in the distributor. So I'll have 14 gauge, wire, 14 gauge power to this coil and to the module. And it'll be on a circuit pretty much by itself, a fuse circuit by itself. It's, I think the, the uh, 14 gauge wire can handle up to 17 amps, so that's plenty. And that's, like I said, I'm going to put a 15 amp fuse in, in, the, uh, in the fuse holder. So that's what I'm doing. This is an improved design from the uh, original wiring. And uh, personally, I, I just think it's the right way to do this because you're, you're trying to get the most out of your ignition system. And I believe, my personal opinion, that's what was hurting the Thunderbolt to a certain degree is the amount of, uh, or the, how small the purple wire was that was feeding both the module and the distributor, or excuse me, the module and the ignition coil. I just think it was overtaxing that purple wire to a certain extent. So um, that's one change, and uh, I'll stop the camera now, finish wiring this up, and then I'll talk about the next change after I finish this. Stay tuned for that. All right, as I was saying, I now have the uh, ignition coil fed from this terminal here. This is straight off the circuit breaker, I believe. It's a purple and uh, red with a purple stripe. And that's your starter solenoid. This side over here is what actually tar turns your starter on. But that is a straight shot from the circuit breaker. Um, and I've now attached a orange 14 gauge wire going off the back down to the fuse uh, holder down there. The fuse holder is empty right now. I've got to put a 15 amp fuse in it. That runs around here and ties into the uh, to my relay here. I've mounted the relay just to ground for the relay, and the uh, so that terminal there lands on terminal 30 of this 30 of the relay right there, and then uh, terminal 87, which comes off the front of this relay right down here, then comes up and feeds the ignition coil power. So now my ignition coil is getting a very good source of 12 volt power from there through the relay to there. So it, it'll be really beefed up. And that's really the way this should be done. Uh, feeding that coil off that small 18 gauge purple wires, uh, to me, it should not be done. All right, that wraps up the uh, change on the uh, Thunderbolt, oh, excuse me, the ignition power source. And uh, now I'm going to go on to the uh, second part of this video. Um, if you remember, I said to jumper or to butt splice the uh, tan and blue wire back on the uh, Thunderbolt 5 module in part one. I said to butt splice the tan and blue wire to the yellow wire, and that will make your over temperature alarm horn continue to work. Um, I was mistaken in that the uh, that yellow wire goes to a coolant sensor. It's a it's a thermistor sensor. It very it's a very res variable resistance based on temperature. And you, you can't switch a horn on and off with a variable resistor. So what happened was the, uh, the the horn was going off pretty early after I cranked this thing up. As that temperature started to warm up, it was going off way too early. And uh, that was my mistake, thinking that that sensor was a switch rather than a actual sensor. So the problem is that the Thunderbolt 5 is using that sensor, and then the logic to turn on the horn is inside the Thunderbolt 5 module. 
I keep pointing down there, I don't know why, but the Thunderbolt module's up here. But the bottom line is that there's a sensor. I don't know if you can see it. It's right down there. I've got it disconnected because the horn was going off. So it's, uh, let me see if I can pull it out here. Yeah, here we go. So here's the connector. And you'll see it's got a yellow and black wire to it. And so what I'm about to do, I'm gonna have to take off these three hoses. This hose, this hose, these two, this hose is above that one. And this hose is also above that. This is your incoming water from your outdrive. So we gotta take this hose, hose loose, take that hose loose to get to this hose, take this hose off, take out the temperature. There's a temperature sensor down in there. I'm taking it out and I'm gonna replace it with another temperature sensor. Or actually it's called a temperature switch. I'm replacing that with this device here, which is a temperature switch. I've already checked it and it goes off at about 205, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. I checked it in boiling water and that's the temperature that it switched on and off at. Um, this one actually came out of another core engine I have, so it was uh, free to me, but here's the downside to this change. This sensor brand new is part number Mercury 48952. This part's $95. So, um, to me, putting this, replacing the uh, sensor down there with this switch is the clean way to do this change. You'll still have your alarm horn off this device. If you butt splice the tan blue to the yellow wire back at the Thunderbolt 5 module, that's to me the way you should do it. It's just going to cost you $95 for a new switch like this, unless you can source one from a, another place. Um, there's a way you could keep the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt 5 module in the boat, keep it hot, keep the purple on it to power it up, keep the ground on it to keep it grounded, and keep the tan blue to it, keep the yellow wire to it, and then uh, cut, every, do every, cut everything else. But to me, that's just not a clean installation. You'll have ignition coil, you have a Delco distributor, you'll have the Thunderbolt 5 module, it just makes it messy. And it just makes it messy to save a hundred bucks. So to me, uh, this is the way you should do it. So. I'm going to now install this switch in place of the sensor and that yellow wire, there's yellow wire right here, I'm going to cut it off and put a ring terminal on it so that the ring terminal fits on here. And I bought a, uh, this thread is 10, number 10 size screw, 32 inch pitch, or 32 thread pitch, and I bought a uh, nylock nut to go on here to keep it from backing off. So um, once I get it installed and wired, I'll show you what that looks like. So about to do that now, about to take these hoses loose and put this new switch in. All right, I now have all the hoses removed out of the way and the sensor's right there. I believe the thread, or excuse me, on this one, the, uh, it takes a three quarter deep socket to get this sensor out, but the, uh, the switch that replaces it right here is 11 16 socket. So I'm gonna get my socket set, remove that sensor and put that switch in its place. Okay, I've now installed the temperature switch. It's got the red band on it. I'll put a ring terminal on the yellow wire with heat shrink and put a uh, nut on the thing, on the uh, switch, so it's now ready to uh, put the hoses back on. All right, all the hoses are now reattached and tightened down. And I've got the wires uh, tie wrapped to the uh, water cooling hose, the incoming water cooling hose, keep them away from the throttle cable. And everything's ready to go. I'm now going to reinstall the gear oil reservoir, hook up the alarm on that, and then attach the other end of the gear oil. There's a quick connect fitting down here, right there, if you can see it. The quick connecting fitting, quick connect fitting snaps onto that, and so that part's done. So I'm going to install that and then take this boat out on a test drive on the river. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the test drive.